Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to import a video with audio into Unreal Engine 5.4. And I've done variations on this in the past and I've had problems getting it to work. But as of July 2024, it's working with an AVI file. I'm not sure why it's working, but it all seems to be working just fine right now. But I would recommend doing this with an AVI file, not a .mov or MP4 file, because that's what seems to work the best and most consistently for me. There's just a few steps involved with this, and like I said, I've done versions of this in the past, but you should consider this the most updated way to do it. And it's cool because it comes in with the audio. So anyway, the first thing you need is an actual video file with audio rendered out as an AVI file. And then once you've got that, have that ready to go. And I have it already on my clipboard ready to paste. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm in a third person template and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new folder and this is mandatory. You've gotta call it movies because Unreal Engine is gonna be looking for that file. Then once you've got that, go into where your Unreal project folders are and this is called My Project 2. Click into it, go into content. You should see the movie folder there. Click into it and then paste in your AVI file. And there's mine, mine's called Test3 AVI and then you're done. Then go back into Unreal Engine. And like I said, this video file has audio. So I had to redo this tutorial because when I was test playing the file, that audio was talking over my, my voice because this video is really of me doing a tutorial. So anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is get a source file for this. So we're going to right click, we're going to go to media and we're going to go to file media source. Here, we'll just leave it called, I'm leaving everything on their default names. All we have to do here is tell Unreal where that file is. So as soon as I click that, it's gonna pop up because it's looking for this already. So we just select it and go okay. And we hit save and we're actually done. Then the next thing we're gonna do is get a media player. So we're gonna right click again, go to media, go to media player, click this box, check that box, double click into it. And on this one, all we have to do is select this here Double click it. <laughs> then all we're gonna do is a print string. So yeah. I'm just gonna right click and go print string. I'm gonna pause that because you're probably hearing the audio playing. And I that's why I had to redo this tutorial because I didn't realize that <laughs> that was playing while I was trying to talk. So anyway, we double clicked on this and that came in right here. And I don't think there's any other settings in here that we need to adjust except perhaps loop. And I see there is some view rotations here, but I've never adjusted those. So anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and hit save and we'll leave it pause. We're not gonna leave it playing for right now. We don't need it playing. And we'll just go ahead and minimize that. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a material for this. Once we have it as a media texture, it'll be available as, so we're gonna right click here, go to material right there. And we're gonna double click into this. And this is really simple. All we gotta do is Click over here, press T and click, and a texture node comes up, and we just need to search for that new media texture. New media, okay. And then we just plug this into base color. You can also plug this into the emissive, which will make it brighter, so you can see if that helps you out. But I think this seems to be enough luminosity coming off of it. And then we're actually done there. So the last thing we got to do now is create, go into the blueprint to pull this all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to blueprint class. I'll just leave it called new blueprint class. And then I'm going to double click into this. I'm going to go ahead and dock this up top. And there's just two things we need. The first thing is we need a plane to project the image onto the material. So we're going to go add and we'll search for plane. And there it is right there. And there's some things that in the past, I made some missteps on this, so I apologize for that. That's one reason I wanted to update this video is because I did make some missteps. So that's this. What we're going to do here is I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. So now we're going to apply that new material here where it says material. So we'll go new and it's right here. And you're gonna notice that it comes in on the wrong orientation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it this way, 90 degrees. And then what we're gonna do is over here on the scale, let me hit the space bar so this is clear what's happening. 
So on the red scale here, horizontally, we're going to change that to 1.6. And then on the green, we're going to change that to 0.9. So it's 16 by 9. And then we're going to go ahead and lock that. But that won't really lock anything, but it might make us feel better. Okay, so we're, we've got that done. Then all we got to do to get the sound is we just got to search for something called media sound, this thing right here. And we can put it on the same level as the plane. And all we have to do here is just hook this to our new media player. And then we can allow spatialization and override attenuation. So we can, you can play around with these settings later, but this, it will play, the sound will play. And then we compile and save this. So once we've got that squared away, we just need to jump into the event graph here. And I'm going to click here. And then I need to get a reference to our media player. So I'm just going to call this media, media ref. And we'll search for our media player here. Search for media player. Right there. We want the object reference. And we want it instance editable. We'll click on this. And then we'll just drag it onto the scene. Get it here. Here we want to pair it to our media player. And then here I just pull off of here and I'm going to go open source right here like that. And then we set this to our source file and we just plug this in like that. And then it should play. So then we'll jump back into Unreal Engine. Here we are. And I'm just going to drag this into the scene. And there it is. And what's super cool about this, if I hit the space bar, I can rotate this around. And now that it's at the proper aspect ratio, I can just scale this up as big as I want it. And it will fill the screen. It'll, it could be as big as a wall. It's amazing how big this could be. And I'll just bring it up a little bit. And I might have to move my player start here. As soon as I hit play, you should see the video start playing. And like I said, it's just a video of a tutorial I did. And you should hear the audio. And I'm going to stop talking so I'm not, you're not hearing both voices at the same time. So let me hit play and hopefully we'll hear the audio. And then all we're going to do is do a, uh, a print string. So I'm just going to right click and go print string. And like that. And then this will just go into here and auto convert like that. So that's it. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time. And I wanna show you something really fast. And this is a point I wanted to make and another reason why I wanted to update the tutorial is that in the past, and I still do if you're working on short, high quality projects, recommend bringing in a PNG sequence. But the problem is they, they eat up a lot of memory really, really fast, like one minute, a video could be like a gigabyte. So if we look at the test AVI, which is just 10, it's 22 seconds long, we go to the properties, you see it's only 83 megabytes. So you get a lot more efficient memory space, even though AVI files tend to be kind of big themselves, but this is only 720p. So this is a lot more memory efficient as far as bringing in an actual file. So I'm glad it's working now, at least I think it's working.